Hi everyone, welcome to this tutorial on graphical user interface design with Java, AWT, and Swing. Today we're going to look at how to make things happen when we interact with components on our panel. So we're going to look at how to add an action listener to a component. In my registration form here, what I want to happen when I click submit, I want any notification messages to go here. So if I click Submit and the Proof of Identity checkbox is not checked, I want a notification to appear. Proof of Identity not checked or something like that. If Proof of Identity is checked and I click Submit, but any of these text boxes are blank, I want a list of notifications here. Please add first name, please add last name, etc, etc. If everything is complete, and I click Submit, a new notification registration complete appears. Something like that, okay? So, let's get started with um, adding an action listener to our Submit button. If we want to use an action listener in our class, we need to implement the action listener interface. And the keyword implements. Now, of course, we need to import this from the AWT library. Because this is an interface, our role as programmers is to code or implement any methods which are listed in the interface. And that's why I'm getting an error here. So let's add the unimplemented methods. And let's go and have a look and see which methods they are. There we go. There's just one. It's called the action performed method. We need to add our own code um, to make things happen when this method is called. Okay? That's the relationship that we have with an interface. Okay, now I'm going to find my submit button and I'm going to add an action listener to the button. I'm not going to add the listener to the D combo box. I'm going to add it to this submit button. Now let's just see if this works. So I'm going to go into oh, I tell you, to see if it works. Let's do this. Whenever we click the submit button, this method will be called. Let's test it and see if it works. I'll just put a message in button click. So let's run that and see if it works. E button picked. So we've successfully added an action listener to our component. Now instead of having the button clicked here, what I want is the no a notification to go here into this message label that I've got. Okay? So let's see if we can um, get that working. Um, message, what do I call it? Message label dot set x uh, let's say button clicked. And very quickly we'll run that, see if it works. E, so it works. Brilliant. Now, what we want to say is, if the identity checkbox part is selected, we want to say registration complete. Else, it's not selected. Let's put another uh, text into the message label. Um, identity. Identity not checked or something. OK, 
Okay, so let's run that and see if it works as expected. Hopefully it will, it's logically fine. Identity not checked. Registration complete, okay. Now we're halfway there. We, even if we've clicked the proof of identity checkbox, when we click submit, we still need to see if any of these are um, blank. Okay, so let's put that into our uh, code. This is my idea. There are many ideas. The identity box is selected. I'm going to create a variable called error count. And I'm going to call a method called get error count. Now I haven't designed this method yet. I'm going to do that in a moment. This will tell me how many of the three text boxes are blank. Okay. If error count is the same as zero, we're going to say registration is complete. Okay. Else, I'm going to design another method called display errors. And we'll design that later. Okay, so I'm just going to comment this one out for, for the moment. And let's deal with the get error count method. So I'm going to make this a private modifier. I'm going to use private modifier. The only way this can be called is from a method inside its own class. Okay, no, nobody can call this from outside the class. Get error count. Um, how can we do this? This is returning an integer. Let's set up um, a variable to store the result. And I'm going to say if. Now, what are the names of my text boxes? Um, we've got name text last name text and mobile text those are my three text boxes so if name text dot get the text from that text box is the same as an empty string we're going to update count and we can use the same logic for last name text and mobile text. Those are my three text boxes. <clears throat> and then let's return the count. So we get their account. If it's zero, we get registration complete. And let's put it let's just put in We'll deal with this method later. I'm just going to put in a, um, a simple bit of code just to, to tell us that something's not working as expected. Let's run this and see if it works. Identity not checked. Okay. If identity is selected, well, that's not true. So we jump to the else and it says identity not checked. Let's check the identity registration incomplete okay so if identity is selected that's true we call the get error count method it's obviously um, greater than zero because we're getting registration incomplete let's just add some text here which is rubbish for the moment and submit registration complete so I'm just going to pause the video for you to think about the code that we looked at so far in the tutorial. And when we come back in a moment, I'm going to show you my design of the display errors um, method. Okay, so if we go back to our action formed method, um, the logic is pretty straightforward for the action performed. We're going to check if the identity is selected. If it is, we're going to get the error count, and 
If there are no errors, we're going to say that the registration is complete. Otherwise, we're going to display any errors that exist. If the identity is not selected, which is this else statement here, we're just going to say identity not checked. So let's go ahead and have a quick look at my idea for the display errors method. Again, this is a... I'm going to make private. This method is only called from within the class. What I'm going to do is create an empty string if a text box is blank, I'm just going to update the error list string with a message, right? So we're just updating the error list string. And finally, we're just going to send the error list to message label. Okay, so this is a void. I'm just making this void a method. Okay, it communicates directly with message label. So let's just see if this works. So let's click Proof of Identity and click Submit. Please enter a first name, please. Ah, it's not come down onto a new line. I want it to be on a new line. Oh. Oh. Well, I'm using a new line here, but unfortunately, for some reason, these components don't recognize this new line approach. So I did some research, and the trick is to start your string with some HTML. Use an HTML tag and replace the new link character with an HTML bake tag. And apparently that will fix the problem. Now because we opened tag, then we update the error list, we need to remember to close the tag. So error list equals error list plus a closing HTML tag. Okay, so you don't know much about web design. Um, these are tags in HTML. So let's save that and uh, let's run it and see if it works. We'll check that. Please enter a last name. Oh, that's, that's nasty, isn't it? Please enter a first name. Please enter a mobile. Oh, I just need to make my message label a little bit taller. Message label is only 20. Let's make it um, 60. So this is the, the height of the label. Just going to run that again before we finish. Uh, proof identity checked. Yes, there we go. It works. 